Hi all, today we're going to use some of the new subdivision tools introduced with SharkFX version 9 and use those tools to create a coffee cup. Let's go ahead and start by tearing out the tool palette with the new quad mesh tools. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to create our base of our copy cut by using the center point circle tool. Picking the origin and moving out. And then I'm going to go to the data entry window and I'm going to exactly specify that circle at three and a half inches. Next we're going to go to the extrude mesh tool and we're going to select our circle specify a vector along the z-axis, go up to the data entry window, make it precisely 4.5 inches, and for the number of distributions around, we're going to put 15. You can see this is not closed, so our next step is to use the uh, fill hole, which will close off an open mesh. And we'll pick an edge up on top, and we'll pick an edge on the bottom and now we have a closed cylinder. Next for our copy cup, we are going to grab all of the vertices on the top face and we're going to use the gripper to scale them out, in effect giving it a little bit of a draft angle on the sides. Next we'll go ahead and we're going to cut out the center of our cup. And to do that, first I will have to make a, add a loop which will represent the thickness of our cup. And then we're going to go to our deep select tool and we're going to pick those interior faces and push them down. And to do that, I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to select clockwise around. Then I'm going to go grab the blue arrow, hold down the option on the Mac, control on PC, and we will extrude copy our meshes down. I'm going to jump over into the front view, and you can see our inside is outside here, so let's fix that. And we're going to go to wireframe so I can see uh, the inside. And then I'm going to pick the scale tool, and I'm going to scale down those vertices so that they are parallel to the outside of the cup. And we'll switch it back over to rendered mode. All right, next, let's go ahead and subdivide our mesh, and let's see what we got. Alright, so our top of our cup is is very sharp, and I would really like to have a more of a rounded edge on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more loops close to the top here, which in effect produce kind of like a rounding effect up there. Likewise, we'll do the bottom. And let's tip it a little bit to get this bottom. Okay. Now to get the inside, I'm going to turn on the inspector, select our mesh, and I'm going to turn the subdivision off so I can see our control mesh better. And then I'll go ahead and add a mesh here and here. Now I can go back and put our subdivision back to where we were. All right, so now we have the basics uh, of our cup. Let's go ahead and put a handle on it. And to do that, I'm going to add some more loops again to uh, locate where the cup handle connects to the cup. And I'm going to add in a loop here and here. Likewise, where the bottom of the cup connects, we'll add in another loop. And with these extra facets, I'm going to pull these out for the support of our handle. And I'm going to go to the deep select, select one of the faces, hold down the option, on Mac, Control and PC, pick the blue arrow, and just pull it out. And I'm going to pull it out about an inch. I'm looking at the data entry window up on top. And likewise on the bottom, we'll pull this out an inch. And now the next step is I'm, I've got to build a connecting piece between these two. So I'm going to rotate, while this is still selected, I'm going to rotate this about 45 degrees. Likewise, I'll rotate this about 45 degrees. If you want, you can go into the data entry window and precisely set that at 45. And next, I'm going to tilt our model a little bit so I can get access to both of those. And I'm going to go to the bridge tool. And the bridge tool will create a set of quad facets between two 
uh, facets. All right, so there we have our cup. Let's go ahead and subdivide it one more level. There we go. And next, let's go ahead and convert this cup into a solid. Right now, it's just a control mesh uh, of facets. But with the new uh, subdivision to NURB tool introduced in SharkFX, I can convert this into a precise NURB surface or solid where you can then do solid modeling operations on it. I'm going to go ahead and pick up my options, and I'm going to tell it to make my, my model associative with the mesh. And then I'll go ahead and tell it to convert. And let's pull away our cup, our solid, from the mesh so I can just see what's going on there. And uh, what I'd like to do next is I'm going to add some text on the bottom of the cup and do some modeling, solid modeling operations. I'll go into a top view and I'll go to the text tool and I'll put in some text. We'll call it Shark, uh, Shark FX. And we'll put in a let's put in a date on the bottom of mug two. Now it's a little bit large, so I'm just going to select all my text, and I can go ahead and precisely set the, the font size, but I like to use the gripper to set my size because it's very dynamic. And I'm going to just uh, scale it to, to where it looks right. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my text, and I'm going to extrude the text into a solid. I'm going to go to the Extrude tool. I'll pick Distance. And for the distance, I'll use 0 0.15 inches. And we'll select the uh, Shark FX text, and then we'll select our date text. Right, now I have to position that on the cup, so I'm going to zoom up a bit, hold down the Shift key, and select both of my parts. And I'm going to jump to the front view, and let's just move it about and place it. We're using the gripper. That's not bad, except now our text is, um, we have to flip our text so that we can actually read it. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll just take the gripper and rotate it 180 degrees. And now when we look at it, it'll read correctly. So our next step is let's go to our Boolean tool and we'll select our part and we'll select the two solids that we want subtracted from it. And so there we go. Now one of the interesting things is the um, this is associative. Everything that we've been doing, it's kind of kept track of it in our history tree. So let's go ahead and display our history tree. You can see the operations. Uh, let's go ahead and select our cup. And you can see we have a subdivision solid that's dependent on a mesh, a series of transformations, and then some subtractions on some text entities. Well, if we go back to our text entity, let's select Shark, and let's, uh, let's add a version number on it. Let's put 9.0. And if we modify our text, what we're going to see happen is uh, all of our dependent operations are going to update. Okay, we're off a little bit, so let's slide that over a little bit, get that on. Wrong way, let's go the other direction. More. Let's make it a little bit smaller of text. Okay. And in fact, if we go over to our mesh, let's go ahead and do a bigger change. Let's select all of our control elements and let's make our coffee cup bigger. That's about a about an inch bigger, inch taller. And let's let it go ahead and regen. And notice that the the solid regenerates as well as our operations, uh, including the text placed on the bottom.
And then lastly, let's go ahead and let's just show our cup and let's put it in um, multiple views. Let's turn our cup on the bottom here, rotate it a little bit. And uh, let's, uh, let's render it up and get off some of these pallets. And so uh, once you have a model that has been a mesh converted into a NURB, uh, you can do all your solid modeling operations. You can create the IGES files, step files, uh, and share the data precisely with uh, other CAD systems or rendering or machine systems.